What's up, Selling Coaching Nation? My name is Jeffrey St. Laurent, and this is the Tuesday Live Show coming at you each and every week. I'm always excited and amped to do this, and the reason I'm amped is because I've got stuff to talk about. I've got stuff to share with you, coaches, because I help coaches transition to a full-time business. And when you do weekly events like this, when you do your weekly emails, et cetera, the stuff that I teach my mentor coaching clients to communicate with your audience, ideally, a week is too long because you can't wait to talk and communicate with them. So I'm excited and pumped to talk about today's topic, which is networking for business. So we're going to talk about how most coaches get it wrong when they network, mostly because most don't do it um, at all. <laughs> but when they do do it, it's how to optimize it and, and how we can actually get business, which means getting paid. With that being said, uh, before we get into that, uh, I do record all of these Tuesday live shows and I put them on my website, sellingcoaching.com in the university, so go ahead and check that out. I have some great resources. Like I said, I, my focus is helping coaches transition to a full-time business. I focus on all the structure to help you get there, especially the selling aspect of it in order to convert your leads into paying clients. But first, we've got to get the structure to help you get those leads. So right on the homepage, I've got a great resource for you to start with. It's called Launching Your Coaching Business, The First Three Vital Steps. So when you enter your name and email, you get instant access to that audio training program. That's going to give you get started and then give you some great information there. Um, with that being said, um, that's also going to put you into my email community. You get some great, great emails from me every week, um, some great information, but also it's going to start to role model how I communicate with my audience, which is what I just said, why I get so excited for this. And I want you to be doing that with your audience. If you're not communicating with your audience, if you're not top of mind, you're never going to get business. And that leads me into what I'm talking about today. And today is about, okay, it's networking. And so... Uh, the term networking can mean a lot of different things. What I'll say right here is, is when we're networking, it's like this is the avenue in terms of how you're getting your message in front of new people. Now, there's networking events like Chamber of Commerce, BNI, Business Networking International. There's a bunch of other probably variations of that as well. I've done a bunch of different ones. I've done those two that I mentioned there. I've done a bunch of different networking events um, when I was doing a lot more face-to-face. -face. Now I'm 100% virtual with my business model. I do all my marketing online, but when I was doing uh, seminars, events, networking, things like that, um, I was not online at all. I, was, I had email, but I wasn't doing anything social media or anything online. I was 100% virtual, and that's a great avenue to be, to be in front of your market. But when you're networking in that avenue, and that's where I'm going to focus today is, is, is with those networking events, um, a lot of coaches, you know, they're, they're doing it wrong, you know, because they're, they're presenting themselves as a coach. And when I say it's wrong, well, Jeff, that's what we do. We're coaches. You know, it's, yes, we're coaches, you know, but a lot of coaches I find, people that I work with as well, they're, and, and this is what I did when I started off, is I, I wanted clients, right? We all want clients. We want to get paid for what we do. So we go to these networking events and we try and get clients. And... At networking events, people are there to help you with your business, right? Referrals, you know, I want to understand what you do so I can potentially maybe use you myself, but more than likely refer you to other people that might utilize your service through my network. That's what networking is, right? Each person has their own network and they bring that. You get a bunch of people in a room and we should be able to help each other out assuming we can understand what you do. That leads me to the point is that no one can really understand what we coaches do. We, we don't even understand what we do. And I say that comically because, like, we, we don't really. Um, it, in other words, it, it's, it's hard, if not impossible, to explain what coaching actually is, meaning it's an experiential service, meaning you have to really experience it firsthand to fully understand it. Then we get the intrinsic value of coaching, but it doesn't mean we can go explain it to our, oh, yeah, I hired a coach. and well, like it, It's not like they're going to be like, oh, I need to go hire a coach. They might be like, oh, geez, I need a coach because it sounds like it would help, but they don't really know enough, right? So the point is, is that we go to these networking events and people have their networks, but they're going to understand what to do. So when you go and you market your coaching and you say, hi, I'm a life coach, I'm a coach, and I work with people, and then we have this, typically most coaches have this a very froofy, vague, general 
I help people, you know, empower themselves to create the magnificent that they were destined to become, you know, and it's like, oh, shower me with this, you know, fantastically, you know, motivating, froofy words and stuff like that, but no one really even understands, you know, so in other words, they're not getting really their niche right or they're describing what they do. So it's really hard for, for me to listen to you in this event and go like, oh, my cousin so-and-so and my brother Steve or, you know, this, this guy I know or this girl I know, they could utilize you. You know, I'm not saying everyone gets it wrong in that sense, but even if you're dialed in tightly, tightly at these networking events, it's still hard for people to refer uh, clients to you or people that could use your services. And here's a, here's a note. And that was a very emphatic and, um, but and if they do refer you someone, what I've learned firsthand is it's actually a bad referral. What's a bad referral mean? Bad referral is, you know, let's say I talk to you or maybe we even do a, a, a 30 minute coffee meeting or a phone meeting together and you even give me a comp session so I understand what coaching is or however I understand it from what you're telling me. And I'm, I'm like, wow, you know what? My brother Steve could use you so much because he's going through blah, 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 blah. And so you know what? I'm going to give you my brother's information. So I give you my brother's information and I tell my brother, Steve, Steve, you've got to talk to so-and-so. I met him at or her at this, this networking event and I, and I, and I think they, they'd be so helpful for you with what you're going through right now. Now, the reason why it's a bad referral is Steve may or may not as bad as the situation may or may not be, he may or may not want to like be doing something about it, right? Because not everyone who's in a situation or a tough situation wants to do something about it. Yeah, they do, but maybe they're just feel stuck or, or more importantly, it's not the right timing. And even if it is the right timing and they're wanting to do something about it, um, usually that when people just, oh, t people tell them you should do this, you should do that. That's why coaching is so valuable because we don't tell people what to do. That's what friends and family do. But in this case, I'm telling my brother, Steve, you've got to go do this. You've got to try this guy out. You've got to call this guy a girl, right? And so maybe Steve does because he trusts me. I'm his brother, blah, 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 you know. But the reason it's a bad referral is because it's, it's not something that Steve's saying, um, oh my God, I've got to do something about it. Who do you know? Or, or, or how could you help me? Or who, you know, who do you know that's to help you? Or maybe if I, I've been coaching with somebody and, and Steve comes to me and says, hey, it sounds like you're getting great results with that coach you're working. You know, do you think they could help me out? And I go, oh my God, Steve, absolutely. And then Steve's like, you know what? Give me their number. If that's the case, if that's the referral, that's a good referral when that person's asking, you know, it's kind of like the typical, the diet thing, you know, you, you go on a diet or you do something, you start an exercise program and you lose, let's say 20 pounds and all your friends are like, whoa, you look great. What are you doing? It's like, yeah, I'm eating better and I'm, I'm exercising, you know, oh, well, I want to try it too, you know, so what do they do? They try the diet that you're on, you know, whatever, but they're asking. But if you walked up to them and man, man, you could stand to lose some weight, you know, or I know if you want to lose some weight for a while, you should try this diet. Yeah, yeah, okay. Do they ever do it? No. Do you see the difference? That's a good or a bad referral, right? So when you're at a networking meeting, you're marketing coaching, uh, an ex experiential service that no one really understands, nor can they understand unless they do it themselves, um, it's, it's hard to refer people. And if they do refer people, like I just outlined, they're bad referrals. So you're going to end, that's what I mean when I say, you know, you're doing it wrong is you're going to these events and you're, you're spending good time, you know, whatever your commute time back and back and forth is, let's call it short, like 15 minutes, you know, because it's going to at least be 15 minutes, if not more, one way, right? So we're talking 30 plus minutes of commute time, plus these networking event, let's call it an hour and a half or so of your time, you know, so that's two hours on a given day, let's say a couple times a month, but then, you no, know, then you're like networking, you're, you're, you're going to these coffee meetings, things like that, and, and you're talking about coaching, and people get excited about it because you're excited about it, you know, I could be talking about, you know, a fly swatter, Oh my God, this is the best fly. And I, and I could probably get you amped up about this fly swatter, right? But it doesn't mean that people are going to buy the fly swatter or need a fly swatter or want a fly swatter. You get the parallel, right? So yeah, they'll get excited about your coaching and stuff like that. And it sounds good, but is the person themselves or someone they can refer to you, you know, in a position where they want to, you know, they need something bad enough. They want to do something about it. The timing's right. And they're, they're open to having a conversation with you. Can't hurt to ask. And it also doesn't mean you can't get business this way. I'm not going to say you're never going to get business. Yes, you'll get business. However, 
it's not a very effective use of your time in terms of the amount of people you're going to have to talk to, et cetera, to get a client, especially if you're not really great with the qualifying process, comp session, all, all the pieces that I teach there, especially when I work with my mentoring clients and a lot of the education I have in my university, check some of those calls that I do on the qualifying process to get clients before you offer a complimentary session. But if you're not great at that stuff, you're going to be even less efficient, right? So I'm not going to, this is not me discouraging you from doing this. Where I'm going to wrap this up is, is give you the way that's going to be more effective in a networking type event like this is where you want to market is, is not for clients. You market for seminars. You market for workshops. Any, any, call it whatever you want. It's you presenting live in front of X amount of bodies, right? So I don't care if there's one, two, five people at a live event or 50 or 500 people at an event. You know, you may not prefer more people, but regardless of what you are comfortable with or not, most people aren't comfortable with speaking live. It's a skill set we must develop if we want to become a great um, at conveying our message. But regardless, that's the best way to actually get clients is to do events. So when you go to these events, you can say, you know, I help coaches transition to a full-time business. Uh, I have a seminar and coaching company. And so what you can do is, is I'm, I'm looking what would be a good referral for me or what I'm looking for are a couple things. One would be people that are having an event or know of events that are going to go on where they're either looking for a speaker or they might be open to having a speaker at that event. Or the other situation is, is if you have access to people or you have a customer base or employees or, or a staff um, where you'd be open to a conversation about having me come in and, and, and talk to them around some different topics. You know, if you're open for what that uh, conversation, what that might look like, then uh, come see me afterwards and we can talk. That's it. Right. And so now people get that. They're like, oh, a seminar. Like any, everyone knows what a seminar is. It's, it's a person or people talking to other people around a topic, an educational topic, learning something like everyone knows what a seminar is. You know, that's why I like to use that word seminar. You know, you can use workshops, whatever you want to use, but whatever it is, like that's what you do. And people sitting there are listening, like it's very easy to know if I'm listening to you saying I'm looking for people that are having an event or know an event they're they're looking for a speaker or you know, a speaker might be a good addition to that. It's very for me, easy for me sitting there to go like, okay, am I, does, do I know of anything like that? Yes, or, it's a yes or no. It doesn't have to think very hard about it. Or I might be like, oh, you know what? There's something coming up where the, they might be a good fit, right? I can, I, can come, I can give you a referral. Or do you have access to a database of people, your staff, your employees, your customers, where it might be advantageous for me to come in and do an event, 15 to 60 minutes, a free event, to talk around topics like, and then you give a couple bullet pointed topics that you talk around, right? And, and if that's the case, come see me afterwards and start, let's talk a little bit more about it. You know, all you're asking is, are you, are you open for a conversation? You're not saying if you want me to come in, if you want to have a date, pick a time, have me come in. To, like, it's, you're not asking for the decision. You're just asking, are, are they open to talking about that and seeing what that would be like? It's a very basic baby step. That's what's cool about that. And so with that being said, like that's how I want you going to these networking meetings. And if you were thinking, oh, Jeff, I don't want to do seminars and things like that. Well, it's like, okay, well, how are you going to get your message out there? You know, I mean, you've got to get it out somehow. Um, and events are one of, if not the best way to not only grow your audience, get more people in there, get more exposure, but directly as well to that, you can get clients from that.